Hey everybody, welcome to episode number 130 of the Deaf Free Dad podcast. Today I have some amazing guests joining us, Daniel and Lori Elwell. Daniel and Lori started listening to the podcast in January of 2022, so about five months ago, based on when we are recording this right now. They then decided to join Roots just a few months later in March of 2022, and since then, check this out guys, they have saved and paid off 35000 $750 and 88 cents in just five months. It's unbelievable. Today, they are joining me to share their journey and just how they've been able to make such amazing progress in such a short period of time. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Debt Free Dad Podcast, where we're helping normal, everyday people learn how to save money and kick debt so they can live a happier and stress free life. Now, here's your host, debt-free dad, Brad Nelson. Hey, 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 how is everyone doing today? You can find me on Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. Just search Brad Nelson, debt-free dad. And of course, as always, guys, welcome to today's show. So glad that you guys are going to be joining us. And remember to get all the resources, show notes, and links for today's show. Head over to balancesense.com forward slash 130. Again, that's B A L A N C E D C E N T S dot com forward slash uh, one three zero. And you guys hear me say this all the time. Every interview, when we got a Roots member that comes on and is willing to share their story and and talk about their struggle and also success with personal finances, these are my all time favorite episodes. And really excited about the conversation I'm about to have with Lori and Daniel. And uh, Lori and Daniel met in September of 1997 in downtown Greenville, South Carolina. Daniel was a struggling salesman working in computer sales, and Lori was a military police officer in the Air Force. Now, they married in 1999, and they have been married for 23 years. Wow, congratulations, guys. And they also have a son, Cameron, who is now in his early 20s. Now, Daniel is now a field service technician, has continued his career path in customer service, and Lori followed her passion for serving and became a medical assistant. Daniel and Lori have a four-pack of furry kids at home. Guys, check this out. A pair of bull mastiff brothers named Opie and Jackson, a pit bull mix named Patty Lou, and an old English bulldog named Cash. They say we are animal lovers through and through. They also say we as a family love to help and serve others, and our career choices reflect that. We love spending time with our family, our friends. We love taking adventures together. We love traveling, camping, theme parks, and live concerts. And lastly, they had, and as of late, we love saving money together and as a couple encouraging our son and his girlfriend to do the same exact thing. Daniel and Lori, welcome to the Deaf Free Dad podcast. We're so glad that you guys are here and you're about to share your wonderful journey so far. Thanks, Brad. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. So glad that you guys are here. So as we always get started, one of the questions I like to ask is just kind of, you know, again, talk about our, our kind of history with money and personal finance. Can you guys both share a little bit about how you guys kind of were raised to handle money, debt, and how that maybe played a role in your early adult lives and how you handled money uh, in debt? And and did that work out for you? Were there things that you learned that worked out great, things not so much? Can you, can, let's start there and, and see how you guys did and see how you guys learned about this as kids. Um, so I was born and raised in Texas. Um, oldest of three kids always had two parents who worked two jobs sometimes to make ends meet for our family in terms of finances and savings. I really never saw, you know, where my parents did that. I always knew back then everything was written with a check. Yeah. You know, a check for this, a check for that. Um, I'm sure there were some bounce checks in there. You know, my parents are pretty private about finances and, if we were struggling, we never knew about it in terms of finances. You know, we always had our needs were met. Um, but I really learned the hard way when I got out of the house and got into the military, um, just how quickly those things get away from you. Yeah. Um, you know, you have, I was living in base housing in the, in the dorm, so I didn't have rent, didn't have to pay lights, didn't have to pay any of those things. So every time I get a paycheck, it was drank away, spent away. You know, and I never really considered saving money for anything. You know, I was living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. Um, I pretty much stayed that way my entire time. And then when I was able to save money, I'd send money home, you know, to help my my family with bills and whatnot. Sure. 
but for myself, it was not, you know, it was a, a hard lesson learned. I was bouncing checks in the military and getting into trouble that way. Now I never got into credit cards. Um, so I'm thankful for that, but you know, just not being able to hold on to money or make money work for me, um, was a real struggle. And when I met Danny, thankfully I didn't come in with any debt, but I didn't have any savings either. So I didn't really bring anything to the table in terms of that either. Um, so that's kind of where, you know, where I started having to grow up was with Danny, learning how to manage, learning how to fill out a register on a checkbook properly and things. Yeah. Um, I learned in my marriage. Right. You know, I've been learning. So that, that was, you know, my childhood in a nutshell, basically. We just didn't talk about it. It wasn't an issue. We weren't privy to any of that information. Yeah. Yeah. I hear that one quite a bit. You know, it's, it's, there was just no real communication on how money worked, you know, um, not even to the point, you know, and, and I can understand, you know, as a parent, you know, I could definitely relate. I'm sure your parents didn't want you to worry about them if they were struggling with finances. You guys are parents. I'm sure you guys can relate too. you know, it's, it's something that you probably would want to hide from your kids. But as far as just, you know, we hear often and even, even in my own life and childhood, you know, my parents never really sat me down and showed me how to do like an actual budget. You know, they talked about the importance of making sure you pay your bills on time. And yes, you should try to save if you can, but no real actionable, tangible pieces of information that I could take and put into action. It was just almost like theory, right? right? Um, so you're definitely not alone in that. And that's, I think one of the reasons why we see so much issue with a lot of people struggling with finances is it, is it does start at an early age. And it's not that our parents did it on purpose. It's just, it's one of those subjects that we just, it's very taboo, right? We just don't talk about it. And you know, even working my, my summer jobs and, you know, doing things like that, my paycheck went to my parents. Yeah. And I was like, I got a sliver, you know, go buy some shoes or some school clothes with. But, you know, we just, again, didn't know how hard it was at the time because that was the goal. They didn't want us to worry about those things. So, yeah. Daniel, how about you? For me, my dad was a one of the best salesmen you'll ever meet. He's the guy that can sell anything to anybody because people buy him. Yeah. And uh, his, pro, you know, his process over the years was always to um, – the person that trained him to be the salesman that he became basically told him, keep yourself in debt, keep yourself, um, you know, go out and buy the big car, the expensive car, the, the expensive house, the this, that, and the other to make it where you have to go out and sell because yeah. you owe all this money. So that mindset basically rolled right into my life. My, you know, I tried sales, I struggled and I, I failed at it. Um, but I turned around, got into field service work and, and customer service and, and I still sell to some degree in that respect. But mostly the thing is, is that we, um, I started off with credit cards. I started charging, 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 charging. And, you know, then I get a bigger balance on another credit card. I put all the credit cards on that, that one with the big balance, you know, and I became a debt consolidation king, you know, yeah. because we would get some, we go through three or four years of paying everything down, be right there close to being debt free and then turn around take out a loan because we've, we've tightened the reins too much, too long. And we turn around and, and we go out and we buy a boat, we go out and buy uh, things that we want rather than what we need. Um, and now, you know, uh, there was never any kind of tracking of purchases, how much we ate out, how much we, we did all these things. So, Basically, I'm trying to retrain my brain to think the way that I need to think about our future. That's what kind of started us on this journey was, you know, basically turning 48. I'm starting to see 20 years. Okay, that's that's the timeline. Right. So we are fortunate to where we are to this day. Uh, we've always been pretty good about paying our bills. I mean, as far as we would never, um, I've, I forget what you call it, but it's where you pay a month ahead yeah one month and then yep. everything else i'm paying behind um off of last month so i have a separate account and we we draft every week whenever we uh we have our our money come out of our account that basically is our envelope and it goes into that to take care of all the main bills in the home yeah so um we we've done probably better than what my parents did over the years um because i have always kind of had that mindset of I need to be debt free. I need to own the house. I need to have all our things. Uh, like I said, cars, things like that. We, we, we are in the mindset now that, you know, we know that we need to have everything paid. 
and and that's whenever our, we reached out to you, you uh, basically reached right back to us. It was, yeah. <laughs> it was married up really easy because it was uh, one of those things where all of a sudden, you know, it's like, okay, I'm having, I'm talking to the guy that, that has created the program. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Take me back or take me back to that. Like right before you guys had joined, like what would you guys say were the things that were stressing you guys out the most financially related? Were any anything specific where there was just a lot of financial stress going on that you felt like, man, we just really need to get this fixed? I would say savings, you know, okay. because like I said, we won't keep in track of, of our expenditures, you know how much we were eating now, how much, you know, we were spending at the grocery store, how much we were throwing away of the groceries that we were buying at the grocery store, things like that. And uh, you don't realize that you're eating out so much that you're throwing out, you know, 50% of probably what you buy from, from the grocery store to eat. Yeah. So the crazy thing for us, Brad, was, you know, just realistically kind of getting a punch in the face once we went back, you know, that three, six months and, and we've looked at it and we're like, we can't be spending twelve hundred dollars a month eating now. Right. But how easy it was. You know, so it uh eight hundred dollars in groceries and and you're like two thousand dollars just for food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna come back to that one for sure. We're gonna come back to that one because that's you bring up a good point. I wanna I wanna hit on that here in just a second. But um you guys started you found the podcast back in like January, early January. Um so like what turned you guys onto it? Was it just you know, was it something in the messaging was like, yeah, this is kind of the thing that we need to do. Or what, what was the thing that kind of clicked with you guys? You think I, it by happenstance, didn't well, you? I, 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 I'm a Spotify guy. So I, uh, I jump on Spotify and I, I was looking, I've spent a lot of time in vehicle. And, um, so I was driving up to Ohio, I think for training. Mm -hmm. Uh, so when I was up, like up and going up to training, I had a 10 hour trip. So, I put you on and I basically rode all the way up to Ohio and all the way home with you. And so, <laughs> <laughs> by the time I came home, I was like, we got to do something different. We need to have and he was so excited. You gotta listen to this guy. He makes so much sense. He's like slapping us right in the face of what we've been doing wrong. Well, there's, there's a lot of times, Brad, that you know, you, you talk to a financial person and they're talking about retirement. They're talking about, um, you know, IRAs and and Roths and future. Future, future. You know, all these different things. And we all know what that is. We do have 401ks. We do, and we are saving but the thing is we won't saving in our personal life we didn't have an emergency fund we didn't have a secondary emergency fund we didn't have sinking funds we don't right and all those things are starting to come into play now so we like i said we are slowly you know we're, we're still in the curve but we're, we're looking to round the curve here pretty soon and, yeah. and have everything um ironed out, ironed out and, and in order yeah. You know, right. Now we're still a little disorder. Um, but, but ultimately, like I told you earlier, um, is that we are looking at, you know, we, we haven't really done the root, um, the, we've been playing with the budget. Um, we're using the budget forms we're filling out the budget forms, but we're filling them up out with what we are paying right now. Right. In food expenditures, gas expenditures. So we're, we're trying to get a six month background of what we have and what we spent. And we're going to try to hone that in to make it a little bit better. Yeah. Um, Love that. What our, what our budget's going to be. Yeah. Uh, before we actually locked it in right now, it's just been behavior changes. Yeah. So, Love that. So now you guys, uh, I mean, and to listen to the podcast for that one, you could probably uh, take this over and, and start doing it for us. <laughs> You're probably an expert now, <laughs> but, but, uh, what if after listening to it and binging the podcast for that long now, but you guys still made the decision just a few months later to join roots. Like what, what caused you guys to say, you know what, we need to kind of take the next step. We need to up the level of commitment. We're going to make to this. We have wasted $269 on garbage on a, on a date out with uh, our niece and nephew. I mean, we, no. we, have, we have, we have, you know, it was worth the risk. You know, the thing was, is when, when I saw your name, debt free dad, I was like, something resonated. I was like, okay, well this, this is kind of a quirky name. So let me, let me put them on and let me see what's going on here. So when I, once I put you on, you know, basically then 
I saw that you were just, you know, pay yourself first, you know, have that men- mindset, uh, get the emergency fund, work on a uh, budget, start having a plan, a where and a why, and these things to, um, to grow yourself uh, financially and physically so that, that the program itself is just you holding yourself accountable to what your income is. Yeah. Now the two of you, Lori, did you have any hesitation about joining? Were you on board or what, what were your thoughts? So honestly, I think for us, really what, what set it off for us too was just looking at how we were doing the consolidation thing, you know, consolidating, thinking that we were doing ourselves a favor by making one big payment versus a bunch of small payments. But then it's like, you know, when the APR runs out of that one, you've got to transfer it to the next 0% interest in the next. And I think really birthdays, and us getting older is what really kind of brought us around to we need to really do something now or we're going to be hurting for it later. Yeah. Um, so when he came home, he was super enthusiastic. Like I've seen him get about, you know, oh, we're going to try the envelope system. It's going to work. It's going to be great. And we try and we fail, you know, and I think this time the plan was much more clear, much more laid out. You know, he was literally quoting you verbatim. He was like, you know, and it makes sense. If you do this, you'll get this result. If you do this, you'll get this result. And I think it was something that was easy to follow. You know, not a lot of steps, not a lot of that hokey invest in this and we're going to promise you this, you know, yeah. you've always from the beginning made it clear that you get what you get out of it, what you put into it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think like Danny said, self-accountability and it just seems so much more real. Like it's more of a, I can do this. Anybody can do this kind of program, not just the rich getting richer, but I think it just translates so much easier for the layman to be able to follow, to understand no matter what your income level is, you know, you can save regardless of where you are financially in your current position. And I think that resonates with us because we're, we're simple people. We're not, you know, high yeah, end extravagant, extravagant, but yeah, would we love to be millionaires? Who wouldn't? You'd be a fool not to want to be. Right. <laughs> you know, and it makes it so much more attainable and it makes so much more sense. All we, t- all Danny ever says is, God, we're, every time we finish a budget or do something, he's like, where would we be if we had started this 20 years ago? I feel and your pain there, man. Or, <laughs> you know, I'm also better late than never. And while we're able bodied and still have the ability to, to put in, we need to make every day count. You every got dollar, it. Every cent has to count. Man, um, I couldn't have said that better. I love that you said that so, too, because so yeah. many people sit on the fence and they say, well, it's too late. It's no, too late. It's, it's I can't, you know, right. Yeah. But they use that excuse and you guys did. That's awesome. You guys should be really proud of yourselves for taking action and facing it. A, yeah, this is a pr- proven program. I mean, it's a program for anybody and everybody. Yeah. It's so not, you know, a particular group. So can you guys break it down? Now, you guys saved and paid off over $35,000 in, in just five months. And, and people who are listening to this are like, how in the heck did you guys do that? So let's let's talk about it because people are asking, like, what did you guys do? Like, what do you guys feel, whether you learned it in Roots, actions you guys took in your relationship, the budgeting? I know you guys have had some really good luck with, you know, getting rid of things and selling items. Like, can you just kind of go through just a real quick list of just some things that you felt have made the biggest difference for you guys in the last five months that have really helped you have that big of a swing? Of $35,000. Baby. One word, eating out, was, was, was what a Lori said. Big one. Our, our first kickoff to this whole um, transformation uh, as where we are, Lori did, uh, she had a 2021, 20, 2020 uh, Hyundai Tucson. Tucson. She didn't really like it. She, uh, <laughs> Um, it was one of those things we bought it because of the warranty, uh, was so much better than, than most out there. Impulse. And we kind of did it impulsively, um, a couple years we had it. Yeah. Um, I just happened to look up CarMax and saw that I was like, Lord, we, I was like, we sell it. We're going to actually get more money back than we paid for it. Yeah. So we actually sold the car back to CarMax, and I think they gave us six thousand dollars, or a little bit over six thousand dollars more than what we paid for. Wow! So, or we wanted a Durango. We got a Durango. We we took the Durango before and, gas prices went up. Yeah. yeah. So then we we basically <laughs> uh, we we turned around and uh, six thousand dollars right out of the, out of the gate right on that vehicle. 
So we bought it down. It's still, you know, very marketable. I have the other part of that on a zero interest credit card. So um, the good thing about having good credit is that you can use zero credit interest cards to get yourself out of debt quick, but you got to be motivated to do so. You got it. We're doing five, $600 uh, five to $625 a month, paying that down every month. Um, That was our, our first aha moment. That's when we jumped on the program. That's when we started doing the meetups. That's when we started, you know, um, getting right off the cusp of that. Um, then we kind of, we just been basically, I have, we have some medical bills that are zero interest that, you know, we're paying down. So we we're not really paying extra on those. We are already budgeted for it. Uh, we're using the HSA so that it's pre-tax dollars. So I'm paying the medical bills that are through my HSA so that, um, so that we're, we're paying that off with zero interest. Um, we have one consolidation loan that we're um, paying the minimum on right now. That's the largest. Um, so, but it's still coming down three, $400 a month on, yeah. on people. So everything that we have, uh, Lori has a 401k loan that we did a consolidation loan on a while back. So everything that we have right now, uh, we, we are budgeted and I put pay an extra hundred dollars on my, my, on my house every month just to, to pay that interest down uh, so that we're paying over $500 in principal. Sure. Um, yep. for that. Um, when it came to the Facebook marketplace, my, my Facebook marketplace guru over here, <laughs> uh, we have sold uh, a cooler that <laughs> I swear I, I, I told her, I said, sell the cooler. I was like, I, I don't use it. I bought a different one for the truck. And she posted for fifty dollars, and, and got fifty dollars, and it retails for twenty nine ninety nine. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> and inflation. I had to use gas to meet the people to sell it. So we sold bar stools. I sold that cooler. I sold refrigerator. A refrigerator. Brand new pair of clippers that somebody didn't like that we've gotten them for Christmas. He sold that four wheeler. I mean, it just literally. And we're just like, what else can we sell? <laughs> I almost put her up for sale last week. <laughs> didn't get much. But now we're just like, even our son's like, well, don't get in my room. Don't look at any of my stuff. Don't touch anything. <laughs> but all of a sudden it's infectious because we list these things. And literally within a matter of days, in some cases, hours, they're gone. Yeah. So really it, it excites you because we're also decluttering in the process. Yeah. So, so it's made a big difference. And then, of course, right now, I think our next biggest sale if and when we're ready is going to be this house um cameron's really close to being out on his own um looking to move out in the next couple of months or so maybe the next year right now the housing market is fire down here like to be able to sell right. nothing stays on the market more in a couple of days in most cases right and another piece of land that's already paid for um so we just you know have to get out there and, and do the septic and that's an investment Right. But that's why we're saving. That's yeah. why we have an emergency fund and other savings allocated for those situations. Yeah. So downsizing, consolidating, you know, things that way and get rid of a lot of the excess is going to make a huge difference too, financially yeah. and just stress wise. Yeah. That's a, that's amazing. And I think the thing I want to just congratulate you guys on, and, and we kind of talked about this before we even hit the record button here today is, is just the amount of action that you guys have taken. And you know, we talk about it all the time on this podcast. It's like, look, we can sit here and talk about all the things that are going to help you get out of debt, but unless you're willing to take action, unless you're willing to, and and take massive action, you know, you're going to stay stuck. You know, that's where the results come from. And and that's why I love about you guys being in roots and sharing those wins every single week is that every week you guys are just taking massive amounts of action. You're always asking like, what's next? So real quick, I just want to ask you a quick question. Mindset change. Like, what do you think has changed in both of your minds versus say five, six months ago before you started this, like what's really kind of like really gotten the engines going here, you think? I really think that that it all really turned on, the, the burners turned on when we started going cash rather than car. Yeah. Um, when, when we turned around and I was like, man, we're spending, you know, eating out a day, whatever. I was like, let's do $50 a day. You think we can make it off a, a week, you know, for a $10 a day budget for breakfast, lunch, rather than, you know, just, 
swiping the car for seven, eight dollars at a time. Yeah. You know, let's just try to live within these means. And, you know, we, we turned around, we started coming back and we, we created a, a contest between us. Like, let's see who, who has the most money at the end of the week. And, you know, I ain't going to lie. She got the benefit because she gets catered lunches at, at her medical office. Uh, so uh, she's has a perk to her, her yeah. side of it. But ultimately, it hasn't taken much effort for me to pack a lunch, make a breakfast sandwich, something to before I hit the road and then get out there, have snacks, things like that, pack a cooler um, with, with drinks and things like that I need throughout the day. So small sacrifices add up so big. We were sitting there, we were counting up what we were, what we were saving like 10 weeks. We were like over a thousand dollars. And I was like, 10 weeks, where have we been? What have we been doing all these years? See, (laughs) I was like, I mean, I, I, you go all the way back and you're just like, man, and it wasn't hard. I mean, it really still was not hard. Still isn't hard. The only time it makes it hard is if we miss the trip to the grocery store. Yes. That's what, what kills us. Well, we've made, that's even improved now on the set days that we're like, okay, we're going to go grocery shopping. Um, we've got dinner on the grill right now. It's just waiting to be finished off. Um, but Food I think budget. we, we're, we're, we're very fortunate to have a very supportive relationship. Yeah. Um, we encourage each other. We're our biggest fans for each other and for our family to succeed. So the, the competitiveness has always been in both of us and all three of us, honestly, but it just made it fun. It made it not so, okay, let's just write out the budget and hike out these numbers. You know, it's, it's made it fun. It's made it engaging. The community itself has been a huge support. You know, you're like, Patrice is selling all this stuff on here. What can we sell? <laughs> uh, well, here, let's compete with Patrice. But it's just everybody in the community has been so welcoming, so fun. You know, the tips that you get from other members, even if you're a single parent, even if you're a couple, even if you're a couple where one or the other isn't interested, yep. I mean, really turning on a podcast and listening or getting involved that way is not hard. You know, you're going to spark someone's interest because that's, I'm not a podcast kind of girl. I want to hear my music. Right. So he was like, just, just give me 15 minutes and listen to Brad for 15 minutes. And that's how it started, honestly. Yeah. He was like, do you think you can make it off of off $50? I was like, I can make it off $30. And when we were bringing home, you know, we're like, how much do you have? And I was like, I saw $50. He's like, well, I have $50 and 35 cents because I found 35 cents on the ground. You know, now we're scouring parking lots <laughs> and picking up pennies. I mean, it looks crazy. <laughs> it sounds crazy, but a penny saved truly is, yep. you know, a penny earned. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing what happens when you get motivated and you start to win the things that you guys are willing to do. Um, and, and you guys are proof of that. That is so exciting. So, um, one of the things that we talk about a lot at Roots, you guys know this, is I'm I'm really big on, you know, kind of defining why. Like, why do you want to do this? Like, what is the reason behind the work that you guys are putting in? Have you guys found over the last five months that that why has been more defined with you guys and that's helping you guys stay motivated and even get even more motivated, you think? And can you share a little really quick, like, what is the what is the why? Like, what 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 does all this mean for you? Because people might be listening to this and be like, man, I don't want to cut out eating out. I don't want to... I don't want to give up stuff. I don't want to do that, but you guys are willing to do that, but there's a reason for it. You're not doing it just to do it. You're doing it for something bigger. It's for a comfortable retirement and living within our means. Living within our means is probably the biggest thing to us. Um, you know, we're, we like shoes and we like clothes and things like that, but you know what? We have those things. Adding to those things before we need them doesn't make sense. You know, we don't need 58 pairs of sneakers as much as we love them. You know, we need to wear out the 58 that we have now and then consider buying some when we need them. So the frivolous spending has definitely, definitely been dialed down significantly. I think think one is not to be a burden to our son when we get to those older, the the elder years, you know, we don't want to turn around and and need him and have to rely on him for for a lot of things, you know, um, number two is a minimalistic mindset, you know, is, is where I've kind of went. I'm like, why do we need all this stuff? Why do we need all these things? Mm -hmm. The swimming pool, we got rid of that. And I was like, man, I thought he's like, don't you take a penny less than to the, what I listen to. <laughs> and I was like, I don't care. I was like, I'll, I'll give it away because I spent a thousand dollars on it in chemical just last year. And I was like, I was like, it's crazy to think that, you know, these things in our life, the four wheeler, I, I hate to part with, but 
I haven't ridden it in four months, five months, six months, you know? So the thing is when you start to think and add those things up, it's a depreciating asset. It's not going to have a value tomorrow vehicles, you know, things like that. You start to think differently when you start thinking minimalistically, you know? So you start saying, Hey, let's, let's declutter our house. Let's declutter our lives and, and let's, let's make money and save money while we're doing it. And let's get something back from what, all the years of, of making bad choices. Yeah. So good, man. I can, um, I just, I, I am right there with you. You know, I, everything you're talking about is exactly what I went through and, um, just the, the amazing feeling once you declutter your life from that stuff and you separate your life from stuff, you know, you'd mentioned, uh, Daniel, yeah. you know, the whole idea of, you know, selling to buy stuff and buy stuff that's going to push you to keep selling more. Right. And it's like, well, that's backwards thinking. Like, how about we make a living to create more freedom in our lives? You know, what about that? What about that mindset? You know, where it's less stuff and it's more like, I want to sell because this is going to create more freedom in my life and not necessarily just create more stuff. Um, When we're debt free, we'll have another 22, $2,500 a month liquid. And I'm like, you know, we put that into a Roth. We put that yeah. into, um, Don't let it grow you know, itself. we, we can, we can take a trip. We can do a lot of, we, we have so much more flexibility to do things that we want to do, yeah. but it comes at a small sacrifice. I think I posted up there that small sacrifice now makes big rewards opportunity later. and rewards later. You yeah. Know? Yeah, but absolutely. That, that's where we are. And how, <laughs> how hopeful is it to, to think about that? How hopeful do you guys feel now compared to five months ago? Much more oh, than we've ever been. Because we're, we're looking at how we're buying down the debt. Like we're I said, looking at it every month at, after I, I fill out the budget and fill out all the all the, all the the red, we, we turn around and we look at it and we're just like, man, yeah, we're, we're, we're in a good position financially. Uh, still, knock on wood, thank good Lord, but ultimately it, it, the, the small sacrifices that we're making is just creating such huge gains in our life that – I don't know why anybody would do. It. Yeah. Yeah. It's so awesome. So, so, so happy for you guys. That's so awesome. So talk a little bit about, um, relationship. Have you guys found that your marriage has improved, you know, since you guys have started this and any, any differences from when you started versus where you're at now? <laughs> I see you guys got a chuckle. You know, I'll, I'll be honest. I am more of the impulsive one in some cases, you know, when, when the boys would ask for stuff, I would never say no you know, four wheelers, motorcycles, we've gone through all those things. And I'm like, you know, Dana would be like, Cameron doesn't need that. I'm like, but he's our baby. He's the only one. You <laughs> right, know? right. Or Dana would be like, man, I saw that motorcycle back there and it was nice. I'm like, let's go get it. He's like, seriously? I was like, let's just go get it. I mean, we're only, we only live once, but in living once we were killing ourselves financially, you know, and in yeah. retrospect, those things were nice to have, but they either are no longer with us or, you know, caused a burden at the time that we didn't realize. And we just jumped into it head first. I'm glad to say that of the things that we've sold, we've not bought something and brought something else into the house. We've literally socked all that money, every single cent away. So nothing's been purchased for that. It's actually gone to our greater good, but I can't, it, it sounds so cliche, but we actually have had a really good marriage. Oh, we've always, uh, we've mean, always gotten along perfectly. Um, you know, we, 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 on a bit a couple times mad at each other but, you know, <laughs> we've, we've encouraged uh, we've encouraged each other always whether it's making good decisions yeah. or bad decisions we've always been true partners in crime but um you know manifesting our future and what we want our lives to look like yeah right now is at the forefront of everything so good. Our, our relationship brad I, has always been you know we've been best friends you know the best friends plus well, we don't um, hide stuff from each other. Yeah, Bad yeah. as we want to sometimes when we've made purchases that we shouldn't have. <laughs> we've never really truly hid things from each other. And I'll be honest, I have a guilty conscience. If I spend money on something, I'm calling Danny. I'm like, you're going to kill me. This is what I did. did. <laughs> but I'm going to pay it back and I'm going to give you money back on it. You know, so it's really, if anything, made us more accountable. Yeah. Not good to ourselves, but to each other because this is, this is an us thing. You know, our plan is not for one to be gone or the other to be gone. It's to do this together. Right. Love that. So we're, we're taking that into consideration and really pushing each other, you know, to, to get to that end goal, Yeah, you know, it's much more attainable. It's within sight, within reach now more so than it's ever been. 
Yeah. And I can't say, had we started this program 20 years ago, would we have stuck with it? Would we have made our million and, and then blew that million? I don't know. Yeah. But perhaps, you know, maturity wise and, and thinking wise, we're in a better position now than we would have been then. Yeah, definitely. Maturity plays a big role. I, I always think about that too. It's like, if I would have had all this information in my early twenties, would it have mattered? Would I have just looked at it and been like, I don't need that. You know, um, it definitely, I, I feel like there's a lot of us that get to this point with age and experience and realize like, okay, we got to do something different, right? It's not working. It's not yeah. working. So, how you know you have your you have your son, um, friends, family, son. Anyone think you guys? Any have you guys talked to anybody about the things that you guys have been doing? Anyone kind of look at you strange, like you're getting out of debt? Like any any experiences we, with any we, of that? Or we have made some some mentions to some friends and things like that, coworkers, things like that. Um, ultimately, um, not really had anybody press me one way or the other. Yeah. Um, so far for, for me, I mean, um, you know, people were asking me why I'm selling things and whatever, why you get rid of your four wheeler, why are you doing this? Why'd you get rid of the pool? Uh, uh, it's we something we don't need. I mean, I think we got in the pool like three times. I think I got in the pool more to clean it last year than we ever did. <laughs> to enjoy to it. actually so, use it yeah you know, the thing is yeah. it's like i said money pit you know so um just looking at things from a different perspective and and i have no i'm i've always been an open book i tell people what i'm doing how yeah. i'm doing you can agree with it or not i'm, I'm still going to do, do what it I'm gonna do, so. <laughs> yeah. i mean we we kind of wait for that opportunity when they start talking about their finances and about how much we're like oh did you know about such and such this is a program we're doing let's tell you about it or what it's done for us. And they're like, seriously. So it, we've planted little seeds, yeah. but I think as we grow and as our, you know, finances mature and as they grow and as we make big steps going forward, it's going to be more noticeable. And I think it's going to get some more attention. Yeah. But we have planted little seedlings and some folks and like, Oh, that does make sense. And we're like, doesn't it? Yeah. It yeah. makes sense. And they really think about it. And I've had some people, who are like, what's that program called? And we've told them, and they're like, well, my husband won't do it or my wife won't do it. And I'm like, well, you do it. Right. You start it. And then, you know, see if it, if it piques their interest. Let them listen while you're doing something. Just put it on and let somebody listen in the background. Yeah. I think, well, and I think for the two of you, I mean, it's, it's awesome that the two of you have been so committed to doing this together because it is, it is something like if you're listening to this and you can relate to what Lori just said, like you really want to try out roots or you really want to get started with some of the stuff that we're talking about, but yet your partner's hesitant. Um, it's, that's a pretty common thing. Uh, and in fact, it's, it's more uncommon to have someone like Lori and Daniel who are here who are doing it together. Um, and so I think for you guys, I think that that's been awesome. That's been one of my favorite parts about watching your guys' journey is that you guys are challenging each other. You're doing it together. You're celebrating it together. Um, you know, we don't see that very often this day and age anymore uh, in Inside Roots and, and helping people. It's it's usually the opposite. It's I can't get my partner on board, you know. So I think um, the two of you being able to do it together, it's it's been amazing. It's been awesome to watch. You guys should be really proud of that and proud of your relationship and where it's at. It's very cool. Yeah. We put in a lot of work. We put in a lot of work, but yeah. it's definitely worth it. And we, we're, I mean, we're excited about the program. We're seeing what it can do. So why, if it's been proven in this short amount of time, why would we want to stop now? We like, we want to gain momentum, not lose momentum. You know, now's not the time to second guess ourselves. Yeah. Or make bad decisions or throw money in the garbage. Like now's the time while we're on it to stay strong and to stay hot with it and keep pursuing it. So. Yeah. It's been a no brainer for us. Yeah. So I think that's the hardest part though. I think for most people, like, you know, if you guys were to go back to six months ago before you came across the podcast, came across, came across roots, you know, I think for a lot of people, it's just hard to get started. You know, I think that's where mm -hmm. a lot of people are confused. Okay. Where do I get started? I know I need to work on this. I know I need help, but it's just like, where, what are my options? Like, what do I do? So, I mean, you guys have done this. You guys have gone through this the last five months. Like if you guys had to give advice to you guys six months ago, what would you say to them today, knowing what you know now and based on what you guys have experienced? Um, six months ago, what I would probably say to myself, you know, you were foolish not to start this program because the, like I said, it is the where and the what and the why, you know, so the thing is you have to have some goals. Um, that's something that in our marriage, we've really never, never Set. started with you know we never said hey 10 years from now we want to do this or five years we've just always said we're going to be together we're going to be together but um, are we going to be together in a cardboard box yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i think 
put to put something in perspective, honestly, for us, the eye opener was going through your bank statements. Yeah. Tabulate all those expenditures and see where it's gone and see how quickly it's gone. I mean, for us, seventeen hundred, two thousand dollars a month in a thirty day period eating out and having nothing to show for it but high cholesterol and you know, no money. I mean, really put those expenditures out there, tabulate yeah. all those things individually and, and take a good hard look at it. And then multiply that by however many years you've been living that way. The loss is real. Yeah. Like the loss is real. It was yeah. like when I quit smoking, I, I tallied it up. Like what, what I started paying when I first started full time smoking till, till then. And I think it was like almost 12, 13, $14,000 in the 10 years that I smoked. Um, thank God I'm away from it, but, but the truth of the matter is, is, um, you know, you, that hindsight's 2020 and while you're in the addiction and, and having to have it every day, you yeah. don't care what it costs, right. you know? And that's the thing with debt is sometimes it is an addiction. It is, Hey, so I got this, mind. I got this credit card offer. I can, I can go purchase. I can do this. I can do that. Yeah. I can be happy for a moment. But when the newness wears, wears off, off or and the shine, first bill comes. you know, and the bill starts to come two or three months down the road, you you're can miserable. Hundred, you can hundred dollars yourself to death. Yeah. You know, yep. you're like, oh, wow, let's just be a hundred dollars. You know, okay. And it comes so quick and so fast. Yeah. So, so could, fast, especially on the on the days or the months or the weeks that you don't make as much as you thought you were going to make. Those bills are still there, expecting to get their pound gotcha. of flesh. Yep. Where do you get it from? Then you borrow. Then you consolidate, then you take out loans, and that snowballs yeah, yeah. <laughs> into. Um, an, uh, I mean, <laughs> it's it's astronomically ridiculous how much money you spend on frivolous things that you have nothing to show for. Who needs fifteen bedspreads? Who needs thirty eight decorative pillows? You buy it because it's cute, or you buy it because right. it's what's in at that moment, but it's out the next day. Don't Got point it. at me. Yep. Point at. <laughs> but um, I've been guilty. I've been guilty. But you know, simplifying things, cutting back things, has actually made us happier. Ironically enough, we're not drowning in things that we don't need, things that have no place in our home. And you know, further downsizing and moving forward, as as we plan to do, is going to free us even more. Yeah, I mean, it's going to liberate us financially, emotionally, physically, in so many ways. And we're looking forward to it. Yeah. That's incredible. Uh, Daniel and Lori, you guys have invested $269 into Roots Personal Finance, and you guys put a lot of time into this podcast, listening to these episodes. You put a lot of time into learning the things that you guys should do, and you guys have saved and paid off over $35,000. You guys ever imagine you guys be able to do that Never. in just five months? Never. 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 Yeah, it's incredible. So I just want to say a huge, huge congratulations. Lori, did you have something you want to say real quick? No, I would have been excited with 3,500, but a little 35,000. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been great. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, again, what I want to say to you if, you, if you are listening to this, the one thing I will say that separates Lori and Daniel from a lot of people, even people that join Roots, is taking action. If, if you're willing to take massive amounts of action, if you're willing to step outside your comfort zone, try some different things, like Lori just mentioned, going through your expenses, analyzing your spending, where is your money going, really holding yourself accountable. Man, I mean, you can make some serious headway in improving your finances, even in, in times in inflation and COVID and things are going bad, right? I mean, we still see people on a regular basis making terrific transformations with their financial lives, and you can too. Um, and Daniel and Lori are proof of that. So uh, Daniel and Lori, anything else that you guys want to share before we, uh, we, uh, take off for, for today? It's worth it. It's worth every cent. Cause you're not investing in the program. You're investing in yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the best way to spend your money. Spend your money on yourself. Yeah. On improving yourself, improving your circumstances. And like I said, anybody can do it. This program is super easy. The tech support is wonderful. Being able to shoot an email, a text, a phone call, that's unheard of in any financial program. You can't talk to a money manager as freely as we can talk to you and, and you know, reach you at any point, any hour of the day. That is a huge benefit to this program, the accessibility to you. And I can't imagine how many people call you, email you, and text you, but you're so prompt, you're so quick to get us out of a, a situation or to answer a question where we're hesitant about. That, that is worth the two sixty nine seventy nine 
89.99 by itself. Yeah. So we thank you for that as well, because it is, it has given us that confidence too, that we've got somebody to kind of lean back on that'll give us, you know, the information we need, the accountability that we need too, to keep us motivated. It gives people hope, Brad. And, and that hope is, is, you know, is it's all on you to do it, but it, that hope is there, you know, that you have the roots community, you have the, um, the access to you, like Lori said, those things are just, they're worth so much more than, what than the what, program costs. what the program costs. And, and the thing is, is even if it's a, I'm doing this or I've, I've done that, there might be some occasions where you can't really say one thing or the other, uh, or give that advice. Um, but, but more times than not, you are there to encourage and strengthen everybody that it, comes and signs up for this program and and with that program being set up for that is what makes this such a wonderful place to be and and it makes it um encourages us to to keep on going and and to 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 reach that finish line and even when that finish line is reached we'll still probably be a part of this community just because we need the accountability as well yeah Yeah. love that you guys absolutely made my day you know there's a there was a day a long time ago someone said you're absolutely crazy for creating a business like this and creating a program like this. It'll never help anybody. And uh, for you guys to come on and share that, it, it means everything, everything to me that you guys have, have felt that way about what we're doing here. And uh, I love that it's helped you guys so much. And uh, I can't wait to see what you guys continue to do. We're going to have you guys back here in the future because I know we're going to have, have a catch up episode at some point. Uh, But seriously, huge congratulations to you guys. You guys are so appreciated in the Roots community. I love that you guys are there. Uh, Always cheering on other people. And uh, you guys have just been a pleasure to work with. So thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate you. Thanks, Brad. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah, absolutely. You too. All right. right. Bye. Bye. Hey, if you love planners, this is for you. But do you know why planners frustrate me? Because they only really get it half right. Now, sure. They're really good and fancy about helping you manage your time, which is really important, obviously. That's what a planner's for. But where they get it wrong is money, the second most valuable resource in our lives. Most planners don't include any financial planning, things like you know, keeping track of paydays, bills, due dates, spending, yearly expenses, budgets, cash flow planning, debt elimination plans, and goal planning, right? None of that stuff. That's a real pain. And then what? Then you got to create your own in some silly binder, right? And who has time for all of that stuff? So instead, what happens? Nothing, right? A lot of people tend to ignore their finances even more and things only get worse. Well, that all ends today because I am so excited to announce and release my brand new, totally awesome debt freedom planner. This thing's awesome, by the way. Now, before you say, Brad, I've already got a planner. This is not an ordinary day planner. This is the Debt Freedom Planner, which is a companion tool that works with your day planner, and it's built to help you manage your money, pay off more debt, and melt away financial stress. And and I believe this is the tool that a lot of people who want to take control of their finances have been waiting for. So head on over to therealdebtfreedad.com, click on the Debt Freedom Planner in the menu to get access to your planner today. Hey, hey, what's this I see? I thought this was a party! All right, all right. That sound means it's time for the celebrations of the show. And, of course, I just want to thank, once again, Daniel and Lori for joining us. What a a fantastic story. And just, again, another real-life example of normal, everyday people just saying, you know what, I want something better for my financial life. And they're going out there, they're putting the work in, and they're getting the results. Like, you guys, if you want this, if you want less financial stress, it is is 100% completely possible, and it's 100% your choice to get started today. And we're going to kick it off next with Faye Jackson. Faye says, I actually gave thought to my budget every time I was in the store. It really helped me refrain from unnecessary spending. Faye, that's one of the many benefits of having a budget. Glad you got one. Great win. Yvette Marie Frazier, check this out. She put $500 in my emergency fund. This is just in one week, by the way, guys. Paid an extra $200 on a loan. Paid an extra $150 towards my smallest credit card balance. Made all my credit card payments for this month already. 
I'm working extra hours. That's really helping me pay down my loan and credit cards faster, as well as building my emergency fund quicker. Check this out. She says, I feel awesome. And I'm here to tell you, Yvette just started within just the last few months in Roots. And these are the types of wins that she's already getting by taking action. It's amazing. Yvette, congratulations to you. So excited. Victoria Ann, I had a few unexpected things pop up, but I was able to rework the budget and I avoided using the credit cards. This is huge for me. Absolutely, Victoria. This is the benefit of having a plan, right? You can, when things don't work out, because they're not going to all the time, in a lot of cases, they're not going to work out at all. When you got a plan, you go back, you can look at it, you can adjust, you can fluctuate, right? You can move, make different plans, and without having to use debt. And this is a perfect example of that fantastic win. Congratulations to you, Victoria. Debbie Kennedy, one credit card paid off. I was able to put $2,000 in my emergency fund. She says, I am one happy camper this week. I bet, Debbie. Congratulations to you. That is amazing. And then to finish it off, Nancy Munoz vacationed to Universal Studios over Memorial Day weekend, paid cash, and flew back home. Tuesday, they drove to Disneyland and paid cash. They set a budget for each of those trips, even with the price of gas. Now I have to get my pool pump fixed because it broke right after I left. Bummer. He, she says, my pool guy said $385 a year ago. I would have grabbed the credit card for all of this and stressed about paying for it later. But this time, I'm paying cash to fix the pump as well. So two paid cash vacations. One emergency, all paid for with cash because Nancy has a plan. Congratulations to you, Nancy. This is such a fantastic win. So proud of you. Hey, congratulations to all of you guys who are working your way out of debt and you're putting to action the stuff that we share here on this podcast. It is so awesome, so inspiring. Keep working hard. Hey, if you're just getting started with our podcast or maybe you've been listening for some time and you're interested in how you can get started on the road to financial freedom, visit our website at balancedsense.com and sign up for my free podcast. Life Without Payments Workshop, where I'm going to show you the very first steps that have helped tens of thousands of people over the years, just like you and I, kick financial stress and worry uh, for good. So thanks for hanging out with us here today. We love your feedback, and it also helps us grow our podcast. So please leave us an honest review. We read every single one of those. And as you guys know, the Debt Free Dad podcast is here to help you live a happier and stress-free financial life. So if you know someone who could benefit from our show, please give us a share. We appreciate you. And we will see you guys on an upcoming episode. Take care. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us here today. We love your feedback. And it also helps us grow our YouTube show. So please give us a like or leave us some honest feedback on this video. And if you want the latest from the show, obviously be sure to hit that notification bell and subscribe to our channel. And for the latest resources or if you want more information on how to kick debt and financial stress, please be sure to check out the links in this video or head over to the real debtfreedad.com. We'll see you guys on an upcoming show. Take care.